Okay, so we're back with our uh, discussion of uh, void functions. So in the uh, last uh, presentation, we talked about uh, user-defined functions, and these were functions that returned a value akin to the uh, mathematical functions that you've seen in the past. Uh, and again, this is an important idea in computer science since it supports uh, several different things, uh, top-down design, uh, stepwise refinement, functional decomposition. These are uh, similar terms for the uh, concept. Basically, the the idea is we take a larger problem and we break it down into a smaller set of manageable problems that we can construct uh, piece by piece. So, you know, large problem, you break it down into smaller uh, problems that you can actually handle, uh, you know, one day at a time or uh, one piece at a time. And this also promotes uh, code reuse. If you have a function that works well, you can reuse that function in other programs. So to write the user defined function, you need the uh, three different pieces. There's the function declaration that goes to the top. It is the what. It tells you what this uh, function is going to do. And it has the uh, return type followed by the name, followed by the uh, list of parameters, and has the semicolon after it. The definition is the how. This is how you're actually going to go about it. It has the return type, the name, and the parameters, no semicolon after it. This goes below mean, and this includes the code as to how you will actually accomplish the task. And then last but not least is the invocation, which is the actual use, and that's when you call the function inside main. Um, typically, you'll call it with inside main. Now, there are also some cases where one function can call another function, but uh, we'll keep it as simple as possible for uh, CS150. So void functions are functions that don't have a return type or have a return type of void. Uh, these are sometimes called procedures. And so the return statement won't have any value associated with it, but we can use return to exit the function early. Uh, you construct these the same way as you would make a value returning function, but void is the uh, return type. Uh, since they don't have any values, the call to void is a standalone statement. Uh, call to avoid function as a standalone statement. For example, if we want instructions for a game and we had a procedure or a void function that uh, called instructions that gave them, we would just simply use the uh, call instructions. Uh, you can also use void statements to return multiple values using a mechanism called pass by reference for your parameters. So you can use void functions if you're not returning anything or if you're going to return multiple. Uh, let's see how this uh, pass by reference allows us to return multiple values. So what we've been doing up to now is something called pass by value. When you pass a parameter by value, the function gets a complete and independent copy of that uh, parameter. The original back in main stays the same. You don't modify it at all. So for example, with our cost uh, function that we wrote in the uh, previous lecture, uh, it would get quantity and price. And those values would get copied into cost. They would be independent. So if we modified them inside of cost, then there wouldn't be any changes to them back in main. But say we wanted to modify them, then what we could do is we could do pass by reference. And then any changes that happen in the function get reflected back in main. What we do is we use the ampersand sig symbol after the variable type in the parameter. So for example, we want to get input for two values, v1 and v2. Uh, we would put an ampersand after the uh, int for v1 and an ampersand after the double for v2. When this gets called in main, whatever you pass to the function gets modified uh, back in main. So when I change v1, whatever it is in main gets modified. And the same when I change v2, whatever it is back in main also gets uh, modified. So reference parameters are pretty useful because it allows us to change things back in main or back in the uh, calling function. Uh, they're useful when we're changing the actual parameter, of, for example, getting input or modifying something uh, when we're returning more than one value. And also when passing the address would save uh, memory space and time. And we'll see that when we get into uh, larger structures uh, such as classes. So uh, you can use reference parameters in a value returning function. You, it's not prohibited, but we typically do it with uh, void. Uh, 
if we have a value returning function, then we expect to get a single value uh, returned back. If function needs to return more than one value, uh, the idea is to change it to void function, use reference parameters to return the values. Uh, the other thing is when you have these call by reference, uh, be very careful about the side effects with those reference parameters. Uh, next time, we're going to talk about scope and overloading of uh, functions. Thanks so much for watching.